Hello and welcome back to our online game sessions tutorial series. In this episode we're going to go through and finally solve the issue of having our client and our server spawn into the game with the correct chosen classes. So taking that information from one place to another. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is editing some of the previous code we had and also putting some new stuff. So the first thing that is going to be different about this is that when they spawn into the map they're not going to spawn in with their characters but they're going to spawn in as a starting location. This location can be completely empty, they'll possess it, but it can't move or do anything. And after some time, it will then fetch the correct information. Because what happens is it'll fetch the inf correct information, but it'll be happening after it's already spawned it in. So we need a spawning a proxy to interrupt that and replace it with our new one. So first things first, let's go into changing some of the older code that we've got here. Don't have to change too much. So we're just going to need to go into our online game sessions uh, folder here and we need to go to our lobby controller. And on our lobby controller, we've got the change character function or event rather playing. And this happens when we change the character in our menu. Now, this is fine except for the last part here. This cast a game instance, we want to take this off. The reason why is because if the... Um, player uh, who's the host changes their class first and then the client changes the class after the server was inheriting the client's class they chose instead so we'll take that off there and it won't be needed anymore uh, next we're going to compile that and go to our third person game mode now this is the game mode that is outside of our set menus it's actually part of the actual game so it's the one that's in the actual gameplay that's triggering our spawning so i'm going to go into our game mode and take a look at this and over here we've got this respawn set up now if you haven't got this it's because you haven't followed the other online series i've done follow that one it'll go through how to do respawning and how to do spawning of characters back into the game We'll be using this same code for us in a minute. So what I'm going to do here is just tie this up. I'm going to get rid of the delay here. Don't really need that. And the switch has authority doesn't really need to be there either. We can delete that and just get that up straight away. Now the thing that's going to be majorly different here is, as you can see here, the spawn actor is choosing a class reference. And this class reference is going to be on this respawn. So previously, you just had uh, this as a, as a, st a static class. We're going to drag this down and connect it to our respawn here and it will add the new class variable uh, to your respawn uh, node um, so we'll feed it in the class that it needs to be used when they respawn and the respawning is actually happening elsewhere so let's take a look at the respawn that's happening on our character and you can see here we've got the respawn character again from our online multiplayer series when I respawn my character after their death. So disable the collisions, uh, change their physics and, and so forth, and then do a timer and respawn after five seconds. So the difference here is we're fetching the chosen class from our game player controller and feeding it into our request respawn. That will feed into there. And we can now see how that's gonna feed into our respawn here. So you're tracking all the way back from that respawn, uh, function here going all the way back to your respawn node on the game mode we are doing the spawn actor and back to that okay and you get you keep going back and back and back and eventually you get back to this point where you, the request for respawning is taking place so follow that series and then come back to here uh, to learn how to do respawning and it's lit and then what you do is literally just add on this class here, which is a third person character class, the parent class for my characters. So that'll be on there and that'll feed into our respawn. Okay. Now, once it's done that, uh, we're getting it from the player controller here. Let's go over to the player controller and that chosen class is getting called from the, uh, where is it getting called from? over here we've already done this last time uh when we've done character stuff so we've got character class we're getting the game instance and storing that so when the game starts 
for each player, their characters, because it's executing an owning client, each of their own characters is going to fetch their chosen class from uh, the game instance and store it on the player controller. So we're using that to feed into our request respawn. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a mess to get around to it, but um, if you followed both series, you should be okay. Okay. But if you do have any issues, just leave a question into the comments. So I'll feed that into there. So as I said, there are the main differences that we're using a proxy. And that proxy, we're going to right click and create now in the blueprint class and call it a, and it's a pawn type class. And we're going to call it a starter spot. You can call it really whatever you want, but we call it a starter spot. And go to its event graph. Now on here, on begin play, we're going to wait a certain amount of time before we then respawn the character in. So we need to first of all make the custom event for our spawn class. And spawn class event, he's going to be one that replicates only on the owning client. So only each client will uh, be in charge of requesting the respawn. So we're going to go to not replicated and do one on owning client. On begin play, we're going to put a little delay in for let's say three seconds and then call our spawn class. Now spawn class is basically going to do exactly the same as our respawn. So if I go over to my third person character where I've got respawning here, it's pretty much the exact same as this. I'm just going to take all of this and copy it all. I don't need the unprocess, I can just keep this one. I'll copy that. Go to start spot and then paste that here. And because it's running an owning client, they should get their own player controllers and get their correct chosen class here. The transform is not going to be a spawn transform. We're just simply going to spawn it at the same location as we currently are with the start spot. So we're going to get actor transform. And that will set us up there just fine. And after that, we're going to delay this a little bit. Not too long, maybe like a second. And then destroy actor. That way they disappear and we don't have something hogging up base. We don't need to. Okay, so that's going to request a respawn with the chosen class. That's then going to go through on the server, and the server is going to check it and be okay and handle the respawn. The respawn then is executing on the server and is spawning an actor of the class and processing it straight away. Now, the main thing we need to do now is tell our third person game mode here to spawn in with starter content, start spot content rather than character content. So when you go to spawn default pawn 4, we've got this set up. We're going to simply disconnect our chosen class here. Instead, we're going to put in starter spot in its place. Hit compile, and that's it. So it'll spawn in the start spots in there where we want their players to start. And then the start spots, then after a few seconds, will go fetch the correct class and then request a respawn. So let's put this in action and see if this works. Okay, so I'm going to host a match and then join match. Change the server here, the big one's the server, to stone. And we're going to turn the client to copper. Ready? And then hit start match. So you can spawn in with the starter content first, the start spots. Then after just a few seconds, it'll take them out and put in the new ones. And you now you've got the class for each client correct and the server correct as well. And there we have it. Class choices being requested and spawned in correctly in the levels. In the next episode, we're going to go through the process of making it kick all the players out if the host is to leave the match. If you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can watch the episode plus many others before anyone else. I say thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.